Okay guys, so check out these images. Believe it or not, these are part of a larger data set that is commonly used to train computer algorithms for machine learning and computer vision. And today, we're going to start building our own computer vision model. What you just saw were images from a Keras data set that was made available by CIFAR, which is the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research, which they assembled years ago in order to provide a sample data set for people to train their machine learning algorithms on. Now the CIFAR 10 data set is actually a subset of a much larger data set with 80 million images in it. Uh, CIFAR 10 has 60,000 images, uh, 50,000 of which are for training your model and 10,000 for testing your model. And it has been used for many, many academic research papers for people to try out their ideas on and how to get a much more uh, efficient and accurate score with their machine learning models. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we start our journey on making a convolutional neural network uh, using Python and the Keras libraries. And we'll be starting that uh, journey today by looking at how to get our CIFAR 10 data set ready for our model. And in upcoming episodes, we will extend and continue to build our model and see how efficient we can make it. Interested in downloading the files used in this video? Make sure to check out my downloads page. The link is in the description. Okay guys, so I'm starting out with the idle shell here. I'm gonna grab a new file and we're going to start uh, coding here. And uh, our goal today is to gather all the libraries that we are gonna use today in our convolutional neural network and also we want to take a look at our CIFAR 10 data set, maybe some sample pictures, just to get an idea of what everything looks like in that data set. Now I'm gonna be grabbing a bunch of, of different um, items here uh, for my import statements. I'm going to get the CIFAR 10 uh, data set from keras.datasets and that's gonna get those 60,000 uh, images, like I said, it's 50,000 for training and uh, 10,000 for testing to see how successful we were. And uh, we're going to get that uh, sequential model. Um, that's going to be very useful for our convolutional neural network, uh, which will be a deep learning network and our dense layers here. And we're going to use dropout and also flatten which is going to uh, help us with our output and also uh, we're going to grab the uh, convolutional uh, layers <clears throat> so we're going to basically use the conv2d um, library and that's going to help us with our convolutional uh, neural network uh, and and that's we're going to use those in our layers and that's going to be very, very important. And then once we've got that, we're going to use uh, max pooling as well. Um, and max pooling uh, 2D is going to help us with our two dimensional uh, images. And we're going to be able to use those to uh, help our computer learn uh, what each type of image is based off of the, <clears throat> the labels that are given. Now the, the images that are in the data set have the label attached. Now uh, when the data set was created, uh, students went through and were paid to uh, put all of the labels on each uh, picture so that we know when, you know, the, we know what each picture is and then we hide the name of the picture basically when we ask the model to uh, to predict what a particular classification is and we basically hide the label and ask the computer what it thinks it is and that is called supervised learning um, and we'll see how we do here. So we got some more libraries. We're going to get our NP utils from uh, Keras utils as well as plot model and I'm going to use matplotlib 
pi plot um, so that we can actually take a look at our pictures um, and uh, we'll also have some plots uh, later on once we've got uh, our output going uh, we're going to plot some uh, accuracy statistics and things like that and that will be great for that so those are the primary libraries that we're going to need uh, in order to proceed with our computer vision uh, convolutional neural network uh, model here. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prep our data set. So now that you know what the data set is, <clears throat> it's this data set. We can download it directly using an import statement and we can't really see what's in there. So uh, we're going to take a look at what's in there by plotting out uh, some of the pictures, but there's our CIFAR 10. We're going to use that CIFAR 10 load data and, and that's going to load that data into the training and test data sets that you see on the left there. And, and then we're going to divide those by 255 to normalize the, the uh, data and, and then we'll be ready to proceed. So once again, we're going to load the X train, Y train, X test, Y test using the CIFAR 10.load data. And then we're going to normalize that data uh, using a division. Um, and that's gonna set us up to, to go ahead. Now you're probably wondering what the classes are or what are the labels of all the pictures that are in this data set. And we're going to answer that now. Now this is from the Keras website and basically um, it provides all of the classes that we need for this uh, data set. <clears throat> and I believe it does the same for CIFAR 100 it is also there and it has like 80 million uh, images in it. <clears throat> now the images in uh, CIFAR 10 are 32 by 32 and that is one of the reasons why this data set is used so much for uh, classification. It's because it requires very little preparation. Um, all of the images, image sizes are consistent. So they're all 32 by 32. And they really are not that great quality for human viewers, but for uh, performing computer vision testing and, and algorithms, um, they're actually quite handy. And there we have it. We've got our airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer, dog, frog, horse, ship, and truck. Um, those are the 10 types that are in this um, data set. And we're gonna, we're gonna do some one-hot encoding here um, to, to basically prepare our uh, Y uh, variables for comparison. So we're going to uh, use our util utilities to change that Y training data set to a categorical um, data set. Um, and I'll, we'll do the same with our Y test uh, because we're going to have um, 10 possible outputs of those. And um, we want to make sure that those are converted over to categorical entries, basically 0 to 9. Um, so that there's a numeric entry for each one uh, as opposed to uh, alphanumeric um, saying airplane and then once we have that we can uh, use our our uh, uh, shape to get a number of classes we're going to uh, load that num classes variable with y test dot shape and that's going to give us basically 10 and uh, that's going to be our output um, basically our output um, size, uh, once we've run our model, we're gonna have 10 different outputs, one for each of those, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna actually put together at this point, I wanna make sure everything is working. Um, so I wanna make sure that I'm getting 10 for my number of classes. So I'm just gonna make a little test output string here. I'll put the uh, classes, the number of classes, and then the Y train um, uh, the length of Y train just to see, uh, to make sure that I'm getting the number of, um, the number of, of data points that I'm expecting. And I'll do the same for Y test and for, and for Y or X train and for X test as well. 
So this is going to be a long string, so I'm actually just going to put this in brackets here. And um, so we should expect to see uh, for the number of classes, 10, we should expect to see for the number, or for Y train, the length of Y train uh, should be uh, 50,000 and the length for Y test should be uh, 10,000 because we're going to have 10,000 uh, test output um, basically labels that we're going to be um, uh, testing against uh, <clears throat> and and then we should see the same for X train and X test and we'll we'll put those into our string as well here and uh, we'll see uh, if those are the same. So I'll go ahead and I'll print off our stat uh, variable here that we created and then we can check over our variables here. So we've got there's our CFAR 10 data set. We've created our X train and Y training data sets and our X test and Y test data sets. There is our CFAR 10 load data function that's going to give us all our data and then here are the classes in the data set and uh, there's our Y train and Y test that we've set to categorical variables and I can do one last check over here <clears throat> check to make sure oh there's a two cat categorial instead of categorical and typo error and uh, hit F5 on that let's just check this over and see what we get here. So it's going to prep data sets. There we go. There, there are our uh, 10 classes that it found. Uh, 50,000 in the test or training data set. Uh, 10,000 in the test data set. And uh, in the training uh, for the X variable, there's 50,000 and 10,000 for our test. Uh, X uh, data set and that's exactly what we want to see there so uh, we can do a little bit further um, I would like to make sure that we're actually getting some images in our test data here this is something that you might do to just check and make sure that you're actually getting images into into your your uh, data set so uh, we can use that plot and I'll create a, a subplot, <clears throat> a 2x2 two two subplot and uh, in the first image here we're going to uh, do, we're going to put an image in there. We'll grab an image from the X train uh, data set. Um, so we'll grab, I don't know, number 255 from that. that. There's no significance to 255 there. It's just some random number uh, between 0 and uh, 49,999 um, <clears throat> so that there's 50,000 items in there and we're going to use that color map uh, we're going to do uh, plt.getcmap we'll use that CMR map that's going to uh, get a color map that we can use uh, for um, the image there and that's the first quadrant this is just for a little output uh, similar to what you saw at the beginning of the video uh, so I'm just going to set the second quadrant here. I'm going to put in image number, I don't know, uh, 10255. And uh, we'll do the same for the third and fourth. I'll just get 20, 255, and 30, 255, because there's a lot of images in there. Um, and we just want to make sure that we're getting something back. Um, I'll, I'll change some of these to uh, 253 you know two three and four just so it's not all looking the same there and this is uh, quadrant three and this is quadrant four here and then uh, we we uh, can see we've got our one two three four so that's gonna use those subplots in the uh, plot there from matplotlib and uh, and we can sort of take a look and see how that's gonna look and at the end of our uh, script here we can put uh, print done um, just so that we know it's run all the way through and I'll hit F5 and uh, uh, we'll, we've got prep data sets it goes through it was all cached so it's quite fast but we never got our image uh, because I never put show on there okay so 
we're done, but we didn't show our, our image. So let's do that. We're just going to do plt.show and then we'll hit F5 on that and see if that gives us an image here. It's going to open outside of my uh, recording window here. Uh, but there we go. There's our image. So you can see these are very gr grainy images. Um, but you can sort of tell of those 10 different types, you should get some idea of what these images are. Um, obviously one of those is a car and there's a ship there and, and, uh, and so we can do the same thing just by changing the number. We can sort of review to see that there's data in different uh, parts of the data set. Obviously this is a very good and complete data set so we're not going to have any issues here. But it does make sense to go and take a look and you can get a feel for the data. Um, now some of these look like they're black and white too, which makes a difference. And, uh, and you can sort of see what the challenges might be. Um, the images are in all different sort of contexts and situations. I saw one was a cat there, but it was sort of sticking out of a box or something. I can't really see because it's such a grainy little image. but um the computer can learn and once we start applying that that's where the magic is going to happen so there are some more images there's a plane uh, you know a car and a bird and looks like another plane and you know that's very very handy you can see that these are 32 by 32 and uh here ends part one of our journey into our convolutional neural network in my next video, we're going to continue this script and we're going to uh, basically get some output and see how well we can do in classifying these images. Interested in more topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description.